Hi everybody, this is Dr. Nally. Today we'll be talking about Dalton's law of partial pressures for mixtures of gases. First uh, slide I want to talk about is just why we need um, this particular concept, we need to learn this particular concept. As it happens in nature, most of the gases that we are interested in studying exist as mixtures of gases. In other words, there's more than one gas that's present. For example, air which surrounds us is a mixture of all of these gases that are listed here, about 78% by mass of nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% of other gases uh, with argon and carbon dioxide being the main components of those other gases. In applications, if you want to, for example, use gases in industry, in production, or produce gases uh, for other usage, then usually these are made in mixtures because usually the reactants are gases and the products are gases, so then they exist as mixtures. For example, in the synthesis of ammonia, we use both nitrogen and hydrogen gas to make ammonia, so it's a mixture of gas that's present in that particular reaction container. Uh, when you use this, uh, for example, in medicine as anesthetics, there's uh, quite a few gases that are used as anesthetics. All of these usually are mixed together in a combination of gases, uh, anesthe uh, anesthetic gases, that are then pumped into the patient. So um, it's important to understand how gases behave in mixtures because that's how we normally see them when we uh, actually you know, uh, working, we are working with gases. Okay, so one of the most important concepts associated with mixtures of gases is something called the partial pressure. And Dalton, the same Dalton who came up with the atomic theory of matter, uh, back in 1801 discovered that when you have a mixture of gases, it turns out that the total pressure of the entire mixture of gas is equal to the sum of the pressure of each individual gas you have in there. Okay, Mathematically, this can be written this way. Pressure total is equal to pressure of gas 1 plus pressure of gas 2 plus pressure of gas 3 and etc. until you have it all added up together. You can write it as well in this uh, fancier form which is just sigma means sum of all the pressures of gas uh, and I is just a general symbol for these numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on. Now, these P sub 1, P sub 2, P sub 3, and so on, these are what we call the partial pressure of each of the gases. So, for example, if we're talking about air, then the pr partial pressure of nitrogen added with partial pressure of oxygen added with partial pressure of argon, CO2, and so on, should add up to the pressure that's exerted by air, which is, of course, our atmospheric pressure. Now, let's think about how this concept of partial pressure can be related to our ideal gas equation. Um, in this particular case, let's think about just a mixture of uh, two gases. So, fairly simple, you only have two components in the mixture. Uh, and each of the gas, uh, the gases in the mixture has a partial pressure denoted by either part P1 for gas 1 or P2 for gas 2. Now, according to the ideal gas equation, you can write the pressure in terms of this equation because PV is equal to nRT, then P1 for gas 1, partial pressure gas 1, must equal nRT over V, and in this case, N is the number of moles of gas 1, so we'll label it as N1. And then partial pressure of gas 2 then should be equal to N2 times RT over V. Okay. Now you, you might ask this question at this point, why does the volume necessarily have to be the same in both cases? Well, think about it. If you have a mixture of gases, right? let's say you have a air in a room. The volume of air in the room is the volume of the room, right? And then, so if you have nitrogen, you have oxygen, you have carbon dioxide, you have all these gases in that room, all of those gases basically have the same exact volume, which is equal to the volume of the room, right? The gases will not uh, separate and just occupy a certain portion of the room. It would have the ability to occupy the entire room, and that's a property of a gas. So, and that's why, in this case, the volume are the same for both cases. So in other words, as you can see from this equation, the pressure 
uh, partial pressure of a gas in a mixture is really just proportional to how many of that gas particles you have in that mixture. So if you have a hundred gas particles, that's going to correspond to a certain pressure. And if you have a thousand gas particles, it's going to correspond to a different pressure, a higher pressure in this case. Okay, so the there is a proportionality between pressure, partial pressure, and the number of moles of the gas in that mixture. Now, in a lot of times when we're studying gases, this um, partial pressure is often expressed as a fraction of the total pressure. So in other words, you would express P uh, I as a fraction of P total. Uh, and this is, for example, for gas 1 would be given as P1 over P total. Now, if you remember from the previous slide, P1 is just N1 RT over V. So that's what I wrote on the top here. And then if you think about P total, of course, it's just the total number of moles now, right? Adding both the P1, the number of moles of 1 and number of moles of 2 added together, but you make N total times RT over V. You can see that these RT over V terms are the same, so they're going to cancel out, leaving you with just N1 over N total number of moles of gas 1 as a fraction of number of moles, uh, total number of moles of gases. This quantity is often given, given the symbol, uh, which is the Greek letter chi, C-H-I, chi. Uh, and you can get the symbol if you type in the letter, um, the letters uh, C should give you the symbol in the, if, if you use the symbol in, in a font, uh, in the symbol font, for example, in, in Microsoft Word. But this is the symbol, it's chi one. So again, chi one is what we call the molar fraction of gas 1, which is defined as the number of moles of gas 1 divided by the total number of moles of gases that you have, or uh, if you have the pressure numbers, then you would just use the partial pressure of gas 1 divided by the total pressure, okay? Now, if I were to just reorganize this equation a little bit, which is the P1 over P total equals to chi 1, then I can write it as P1 equals to chi 1 times p total because then I can just carry this and put it uh, cross multiply and put the p total on this side and same thing with p2 then right if I have p2 then I can just say p2 must equal to mole fraction of gas 2 times the total pressure should give me the partial pressure of gas 2. So let's spend a little bit of time talking a little bit uh, about this quantity mole fraction so first off again chi 1 would be what we call the mole fraction of gas 1 and mole fraction is a measure, again, a, a, fr a fractional measure. So it's just a, it's like a percentage measure, if you think about it, right? It's a measure of how much of a gas do you have as a percentage of the total sample of gas mixture that you have. It's usually, again, instead of express as a percentage, we usually express it as a fraction. That's why it's called a mole fraction. As a result, because it's a fraction, its value has to range from 0 to 1. can't be bigger than 1 or less than 0. And if you think about the way the mole fraction is defined, the mole fraction is either partial pressure divided by total pressure. So they both will have the same unit, which is the unit of pressure. So the units will cancel out. Or they're defined more generally for any compound as the number of moles of one compound divided by the total number of mole uh, of the mixture. Again, in this case, the two units will cancel out. So the mole fraction is really a unitless quantity. Uh, and remember, because the mole fraction is like a percentage measure, so if you have several gases, let's say in this case you have two gases, right? Then the mole fraction of gas 1, chi 1, plus the mole fraction of gas 2, chi 2, should add up to equal to 1, right? Because everything should add up to 100%, just like in the concepts of isotope um, abundance that we talked about uh, a couple of chapters ago, okay? Now, the reason why the mole fraction is an important concept is because uh, when you use something like a manometer to measure pressure of a, a gas sample, and let's say you have a gas mixture, the manometer can only measure the total pressure. It doesn't measure the pressure of each individual gas. Okay, So if you measure the pressure of air, what you get is the pressure of air. You don't get the pressure of just nitrogen or oxygen. right? So if you want to be able to calculate how much what is the pressure of oxygen or what is the pressure of nitrogen in a sample of air, you also have to 
get the mole fraction, right? Because then you can use this equation, which is P1 is equal to chi1 times P total. So you can say pressure of oxygen is equal to mole fraction of oxygen times the pressure of air, and pressure of nitrogen would be equal to mole fraction of nitrogen times the pressure of air, the atmospheric pressure, okay? Now the good thing is, of course, mole fraction can be actually determined experimentally. So you can do this just the way, same way as you would do the, those isotopic abundance type experiment, which is to do a mass spec experiment. So you would run your gas sample through, and depending on what kind of gas, uh, you know, what, what, what kind of uh, gases it contain, it will split up into different peaks on the mass spec. If you remember, that's what a mass spec looks like. And then it will tell you what is the percent abundance. And the percent abundance then corresponds, in this case, to the part, uh, the mole fraction. And then by taking that number, the percent abundance or the mole fraction, multiplying that by the uh, atmospheric pressure that you measure using your manometer, you then are able to get the partial pressure of one of the gases uh, versus the other gases. Okay. In the next video, I'll go through an example to actually use Dalton's law in an application.